Okay, let's finish this video by any means necessary. <sighs> I've already gone through two four shutdowns and I'm already a little pissed. If I have to, if this computer turns itself off one more time, I'm gonna throw my keyboard at the wall. Hello and welcome to the behind the scenes video for the My Little Millionaire slash Brony Millionaire videos. This video will teach Chris how to use the controls as well as show you guys some behind the scenes stuff. So let us begin the game. First thing you do is you do a hard refresh by pressing Control F5. It unloads the cache and does a kind of reload of the game files. I'm not going to go over everything, so for more info, check out Flamin' One's video because he wanted to create this controller. The link is in the description. The next thing you do is press C to switch from the logo to the webcam. Go over to controls. You press the N key to show the contestant's name and hometown. Then you press it again to make it go away. Then you press the left arrow key to play the explain rules music. Then you press it again to make the money tree appear. When, I, when the host says something along the lines of, you're 15 questions away or whatever, you press the left arrow key to show the progress bar properly emulating that points. When, I, when the host reads off the lifelines, you press your corresponding buttons to make it flash. P for phone a friend, F for 50-50, A for ask the audience slash ask the question. Then, to show off the switch, you press S to show off the target level, then again to show the lifeline, then again to make it flash. And then you press the left arrow again to make it disappear. Now we're ready to start the game, but first I want to clarify something. The black borders you're seeing around the screen right now is because I had to zoom the display out to 67% to get it to display properly. Something about the default display settings or whatever, I'm not interested in debugging, I'm just going to zoom out. But right now, let's have the video editor zoom in so the black border stops being annoying. Thank you. Now we can press the right arrow key to begin the game. But first I want to explain a little caveat. If I took too long to explain the rules, then the then Chris can press the E key to keep the music going. But for now, let's start the game with the right arrow key. Let's play a millionaire. To cycle a contestant through a question is a simple pattern. First, you press the right arrow key to make the question appear. Then, when I finish reading, you press it again for the first answer to appear. And once I'm finished reading, that keep pressing, and the pattern repeats until all the options are set, like so. In Equestria, if you were given a bit, what would you do with it? Wear it. Throw it. Eat it. Spend, save it. Then, the contestant makes their answer choice. Once they do this, you lock in the answer choice by pressing the 1, 2, 3, or 4 key respectively for A, B, C, or D on the number row. Do not use the number pad. Use the number row. For example, the answer would be D, spend, save it, final answer. Press 4. If the contestant gets it right, you press right to continue the sequence, which in this case would be say correct answer, show the money, then make it disappear. Then the pattern repeats. Which of these types of ponies is spelled incorrectly? Earth Pony, Pegasus, Unicorn, Alicorn. Well, how do 
how does the sequence go if they got it wrong? They lock in their answer. D, Olicorn, final. Then you press right key once to reveal the answer. And then again to make the question disappear. Do not press the right key anymore or the sequence will break. Then you press the down arrow to reveal how much they've won. At this point, the game would be over, we would close down the browser, switch to a video player airing a commercial, and then just continue on reloading this with the next game. So, since we're using the same files and we're not importing them for another episode, I'm just going to refresh the page. Here's a mid-roll ad if there's one there. If not, you're just going to continue hearing me talk. Now here's an abridged version of the pattern for people that watched that now get to play. You press C to make the camera appear. And again, while I am introducing the contestant, you press N to make their name appear, and again to make it disappear. Now. If everyone here knows about the game and they know all the rules and lifelines, here's an abridged version of how you start the game. You press the left arrow key twice, once for the music and once for the money tree. Then you press the right. No, that's just right. Then you press the left arrow key twice more. Then you press right. No, left again. Then right. Man, it's been so long, even I forget these kind of things. I mean, let's move on to the point where we left off. For people that ask about the censored F-bomb and the uncensored lesser profanity, that's because it's a teen rating and I like to get creative when dealing with restrictions. Speaking of getting creative, here is a creative way that the developer of this controller decided to go through with accidental button presses. Like, this should not be used if the contestant wants a second chance to answer the question. This should only be used if Chris or whoever else is using the controller screws up. Say I go D final answer, but Chris does this. Clearly, I didn't say that. So what he would do is, first I would tell him, hey, you screwed up, and then he would press the U key. That undoes the answer choice. So let's move on properly. D, final. At any time, a player can be reminded of what lifelines they have remaining if the guy running the keyboard presses the L key. Pressing it once makes the lifelines they have remaining appear, and then pressing again makes them disappear. Anyway, there's a new element to the pattern that I'm about to reveal, so let's just skip through these questions and get to it. This is where the pattern changes, so pay attention. You press the right key to play the music, and then again to reveal the question. The rest of the pattern goes as usual. If Steven Magnet was an actual magnet, which poles would his head and tail represent respectively? Top and bottom, north and south, up and down, gay and straight. If you've noticed that pop up, I'm sorry, that's just my email. And if you didn't notice that pop up, then I look like an idiot. So then I, like I said, the pattern continues as normal. B, north and south, final answer. And around this portion of the game, you should be careful of when you lock in, because we want to be stricter around this point of them saying final answer to lock in. Because sometimes people will slip up and say a different choice, but they don't mean it. 
This time he wants them to be certain they're saying it by having them say final answer or confirming that it's their final answer. So we know in this case that's correct. Now we're getting into harder questions, so we're going to show off how lifelines work. Let's start with the easiest one to control, 50-50. If the contestant says they want to use 50-50, then the host will say, Computer, please remove two wrong answers or something to that effect. And all the keyboard guy has to do is press the F key. The two wrong answers removed are randomized every time. So, if you come across this question multiple times and notice which answers don't get removed, then you could feasibly have the correct answer. Which, this is why we don't really do multiple playthroughs of the same episode unless we run out of questions. In fact, you'll notice that this episode that we're seeing right now is a conglomerate of the first and second. That is because, since I only had to write a half episode for Chris, I just slapped that onto the episode. I just slapped those... I just slapped those eight questions into the episode, and then just had them start from the middle. Again, I won't specify how to cross off lifelines or start from the middle. You can check Flamin' One's original video for that. For now, we know the answer is A, Spider's final answer. Continuing on, because I want to introduce the next element, D Tenacious D Final. Since 16000 is serious money in all forms of the show, I want to introduce a new element to the pattern that shows how much money is being played. Now here's how you do it. You press the right arrow key to cycle through the previous steps as usual. Which of the following was cited as the main reason that Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000 did not air in the United Kingdom? Budget constraints. Heavy use of drugs. Alcohol reference. Derpy talked in it. Now. The money that they're playing for will appear in the upper right corner. To do this effect, you press the M key on your keyboard. See? 60,000. Anyway. This question's kind of hard as well. So we will ask the audience. Now, before I reveal how Ask the Audience works, I want anyone who believes that Equestria is real to cover their ears, because what I'm about to say is the equivalent of peeking behind the curtain and spoiling the illusion. Or lack thereof, because Equestria may be real, we don't know. So cover your ears now, and don't uncover them until this warning goes away. Now, for all those who live in the real world, they should know that the Ask the Audience lifeline, or Ask Equestria lifeline in this case, is actually entirely randomized. The guy that made the program made it this way, and we have no idea how to change it. We have no idea how to implement a live polling system. And um, that's why we came up with the spiel of ponies from a question answering the question, because one, that could explain the wrong answers, because ponies would have no idea what I'm talking about. And two, I don't want to show that we're actually incompetent individuals that don't deserve a chance. We do deserve a chance. We're just dealing with limitations. You can uncover your ears now. Anyway, so how you ask a question is you press the A key. That starts the music. At this point, the host will be rambling on about how we pulled Equestria various ponies randomly. And then later on, the host can press the A key again to show the graph. And then we either say, let's show the results, or all vote now, and we press A again. The thing is, we already pulled these ponies already. If you wait long enough, I'll say something about how crappy my computer or internet is. It's fun. Then you press the A key again to show the results. Now, in this particular instance, they seem to be leaning in the right direction. But ponies have very weird memory, so if I asked them the same question multiple times, they wouldn't know that I already asked them that, 
and they might see something different. They might not. These numbers, though, are definitely going to be different every time you ask them the same question. And every time you ask them a different question, for that matter. Anyway, then you press the A key one more time to make the graph disappear, and the numbers will appear on the choices. So the contestant doesn't have to remember them. So, we're going to agree with the audience and say C, alcohol reference, final answer. And we know that that's correct. Now you may have noticed that the money disappeared right when the correct answer was revealed. It's programmed to automatically do that, but there's also a manual control, as I will show you right now. See that money there? Like I said, it's an optional control. It's written in the sheet that I gave Chris as an optional control. In fact, you can turn it off just by pressing the M key again. But let's turn it back on. Now, let's demonstrate how to use the phone a friend lifeline. But first, I want to go over how I plan on implementing the phone a friend at the convention. Now, when I did this in rehearsals, I told them that they would be in contact with one of my friends, which is actually a character that I play. Sorry for that brief hiccup, apparently clicking on notifications to make them go away runs out the game DVR, so that's the only time you'll see the game hiccup, and I apologize. Now anyway, here's how we, do, how we plan to do the phone a friend lifeline at the convention is anytime a player has finished playing, I will give them a P badge, a badge, a, like a sticker or something with the letter P on it. And that indicates that they are a possible phone a friend. When they use said phone a friend lifeline, they can pick anyone in the audience with a P sticker to help them out. If they get the if the phone a friend gets the right answer, then they will be the first in line to play the game a second time. But they can only play the game twice. Like one regularly and one through the phone a friend. Like, once they get invited back on stage through Phone a Friend to play the game again, that's it. Also, you cannot win duplicate prizes. Oh look, the music ran out! Luckily there's a trick. You press the unlock key, and the music continues. Now I would just get longer music cues so that I wouldn't have to deal with this, but I like taking the lazy man route, because it's relatively easy and I see no benefit in going out and researching longer cues when I can just use this try and true method. Now, here's how we will execute the phone a friend and lifeline. Well, first, if you had the money appear, make it disappear with the M key. Next, you press the P key to start the phone a friend music. At this point, I forgot to mention, all the guys with the P stickers would be asked to not reveal what they think the answer is to the question while they're in the audience. But we would also ask that that those that have the P sticker don't reveal the answer until the clock appears. Once they pick a player, we make the question. And then we make the then we make the question disappear. We ask them to pick a player. Once they pick the player. There, we ask them to stand up and reintroduce themselves. Then we introduce the question again, with 30 seconds on the clock, so the phone friend can talk to the player and come to an answer. And once this clock runs out, the, the phone friend must sit back down. To make the lifeline go away, either let the timer run out or press P to end it early. So I'm just going to fulfill the phone friend duty for this question right now. I'm going to have to tell you what's answer B, because... It looks the best. Then you press M to make the money reappear if you're going to do that. So let's continue so we can move on with the next elements. My answer is B, super speedy, cheesy, squeezy, final. 
and adds a 32,000. So, so before the next mineral place, if there is one, I'm going to press the C key. What this does is it makes my webcam disappear and changes it back to the logo. When you are ready to continue the game, simply press the C key again. Don't forget to remind everyone who your contestant is, show the name again with the N key. Make it disappear with the N key again. When you're ready to get back in the game, here's how you do it. You gotta set the atmosphere. So first, you press the Q key to play the resume music. Very ominous. I like it. Next, you press the left arrow key to show the money tree. Now, at this point, you can continue the game normally if you don't plan on using the switch. But since we do plan on using the switch, here's how you unlock it. Now, if you reach the 32,000 bit level, you use the S key. Press it once to do nothing because you're already at that level. Again, to make the lifeline appear. And a third time to make it flash. Now, this lifeline can be used anywhere in the next four questions, but not the million, because for some reason it bugs out on the million. So let's uh, continue from here. The question, the question, question lifeline is now unlocked and completely usable. So let's get started. Let's press the right arrow key and continue with the game. Now, Chris used the Ask a Question lifeline on this one, so we know the answer is D, Rock'em Saga Pony, so let's lock that in as our final answer. Now, for the button presses, as always, Chris is going to have to wait for my verbal cues because the last few questions are where I like to get dramatic. Also, I don't like him being ahead of me or behind me because it shows that he's new. I'm going to train him to be good at this, trust me. So let's move on and say the answer to this one is Black Griffin. Final, I mean. And let's go up to the $500,000 question because this is where I want to introduce the Switch. See his mother, final answer. Now, if you're a fan of mine, you recognize this question. This is the one where Chris screwed up. He said, oh, I should use the switch. So let's use the switch right now. You press the S key once to use the... Wait, first you make the money disappear. Then you press the S key once to use the lifeline. Then again to reveal the right answer. But first, I'm going to give y'all a few seconds to guess the answer. Actually, I'm also going to play a mid-roll here so you can guess the answer while the ad's playing. If you said the answer is green, you are correct. Now, cycling through the rest of the Switch Lifeline is like cycling through any other question. Except instead of using the right arrow key, you use the S key. Do not use the right arrow key during the sequence or it will break. So let's read the new question. Which of the following countries of the world does not have any broadcasting of My Little Pony whatsoever? Japan, North Korea, Canada, Vietnam. 
Now, Chris got this one right, and I feel it fair to point out that I do all my own research prior to any episode of this. Like, prior to writing any question, I do my research on it to make sure it's accurate. I use Wikipedia, I use Wiktionary, I use Encyclopedia Britannica, I use fan sources, official sources, any source I can possibly imagine that I want to use, I'll use it. I always fact check my answers with multiple sources. And since Chris knows this one and I know this one from research, I'm going to say my answer is B, North Korea, final answer. Because North Korea TVs only have two channels, propaganda and fake news. And you thought you two had fake news. Let's go on to the million. Which of these equestrian princesses has not been portrayed in any canon form as a villain yet? Celestia, Luna, Cadence, Twilight. Alright. Now, the way the million would play out is they would press the right, they would lock in their answer, they would press the right arrow key, they would say it's right, and then again to show it their name that it's a millionaire, the right arrow key again to make it disappear, and then the down arrow key again to remind them once again that they're a millionaire. The reason I'm saying this is because I'm not going to show off how it works. This is actually the part where I want to show off the walk away function. Let's say our player has used up all their lifelines and they still don't know what the answer is. So they're going to walk away and take, o take over the half million bits. Walk away, final answer. You press the W key and say the walk away key. I made the money disappear by the way. Once again, don't press the right arrow key during any of this or the sequence will break. Then you ask them if they th if you think they know if they think they know what the answer is. I'm going to say that they think it's cadence. And here's some fa and here's where the answer is. Luna was Nightmare Moon. Twilight was Midnight Sparkle. Cadence was Chrysalis. Like she wasn't really Chrysalis, but Chrysalis took on Cadence's form, and she was kind of portrayed as the villain until we knew what Chrysalis was. The only one that has not been properly portrayed as a villain in any canon form that I'm aware of is Celestia. You reveal the right answer with W. Regardless of whether they got it right or wrong, you once again press W to make the question disappear, and then the down arrow to reveal how much they've won. And thank you all for watching this behind the scenes video slash guide to how to use the software. I didn't explain much on how to use the software, but that's because Chris only needs to know a few things and I taught him those few things. I figured I'd take this opportunity to turn it into a behind the scenes video so I could like put something on the channel for track on trials. A few things I didn't cover. I usually record with Audacity, so I have to sync the video and audio tracks up myself by clapping in front of the camera before the game would start. But I couldn't do that this time because I was recording entirely with GameDVR, because apparently the last time I tried recording the usual method, the whole thing, like, shut down the computer, and I don't know how that happened. I still don't know how that happened. Anyway, yeah, as long as the contestant hasn't won the million, they can gain their peace sticker and become a phone a friend for future contestants. Our planned prize layout so far is this. Anyone that participates can win an original piece of art from Cactus Chris. Um, 1,000 bits gives them a pin. 32,000 bits gets them a plushie. And 1 million bits gets them a poster. Yeah, I know they're cheap prizes, but they're the best we can do. And it's our first game show. Also, we plan on changing the graphics of these damn LP-related graphics. We don't know if we're going to do that, but... We're thinking about it. If we get approved, we're going to have a lot of question writing and tinkering to do. So I hope to see as many of you as possible at the convention. Whether the show gets approved or not, I would love to meet as many people as possible. Especially people that like MLP, because I hear this is a happy, thriving community. So thank you all for watching, whoever you are. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye!